Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. The 2022 boa breeding season is officially off to a start for me. So today I wanted to do a quick blog style uh, video, just give you guys an update on my start of my 2022 boa breeding season and show if you some of the animals that I'm planning on possibly pairing up for the upcoming breeding season. So I did a previous video about my 2022 breeding plans. You know, that was a little bit more formal. So, you know, check that one out if you haven't seen it already. It gives you kind of a good overview of what I'm thinking about for this upcoming breeding year. But today I wanted to show you a few more. A lot of people chimed in after that video and said, well, you know, what about the Hog Island boas? What about the Guiana boas? What about the uh, Venezuelan boas, etc.?" And that wasn't exhaustive. And this isn't an exhaustive video either. I'm just gonna show you a few animals just to give you an idea about what I have in store. But these animals may actually not be paired up. Um, you know, the final pairing is still a little bit up in the air. And then there might be some surprises as well. So be sure to stay tuned as my breeding season unfolds. And so I've actually gotten some animals paired up. This is a little bit earlier than I normally pair my animals up, or I should say that I've paired them up in the past. And it's right now, we're right in mid-November. I paired up a few pairs uh, several days ago, you know, seeing how that goes. And so typically I don't pair up animals until December, and I have most of them paired up, or pretty much all of them paired up by the end of the year. And this year, I'm, the schedule has shifted about a month earlier, and there are a couple of reasons for this. So I've noticed a lot of people are having uh, animals that are born in like April and you know March and even earlier, especially the morph breeders. And since this is my first year breeding morphs, you know, I thought I'd kicked off those uh, pairings a little bit earlier. And also just to give a wider window for my animals. Maybe that'll increase my success if I add about an extra month to the pairing. So we'll see how that goes. So I started off my cooling uh, about two weeks ago and my cooling uh, for this year, my cycling, I'm gonna drop the temperature about 15 degrees Fahrenheit at night for 12 hours from 8 uh, p.m. to 8 a.m. And I have um, Herbstat 6 thermostats which are great for controlling the nighttime temperature drop. And so basically I do this uh, a few degrees at a time, two or three degrees at a time, about every four days or so. And so right now we're down about uh, 10 degrees below the normal nighttime temperature and I'll drop it a little bit more. But you know, typically I don't pair up animals until I've reached the minimum temperature, which is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit at night at the hot spot. But this year I thought, well, I try pairing up before I got to that minimum temperature. And I know some people pair up right at the beginning, right as they're dropping the temperature. Some pair up when they hit the minimum temperature. Some people don't pair up until the warming starts again. So basically I'm gonna keep the temperature at 75 for about a month and a half to two months. And then I'm gonna uh, increase the temperature back to the normal uh, temperatures. And I'll, during that process, I'll keep the pairs together. And so typically I keep the pairs together, you know, from the fall, from, you know, November or December through about February. And that's, you know, when the temperatures are back up to normal. At that point, I typically will uh, separate them for a week, feed them, and then they go back together for about a month. And I keep this cycle up usually until about May or June or until the animals are obviously gravid. You know, sometimes, unfortunately, they don't become gravid. So that's my general cycling conditions for breeding my boas. And I do it a little bit differently every year. I just kind of tweak it to see if I can improve on my success with the main tweak this year being the slightly earlier pairing up. And so I thought I'd show you guys a few animals that I'm planning on pairing up. And this is the first, this is a Guiana true red tail boa. This is an Eckert bloodline male. And so, as you know, I have a lot of Suriname boas, many of which were produced here. I only have one pair of Guiana boas. In general, the, I find the Guiana to be very similar to the Suriname and maybe even indistinguishable. Um, but I have found that these uh, Ecker bloodline Guiana boas look completely different from my Suriname boas. And that's why I have this pair of the Guiana red tails. And you can see this guy is a lot darker than most Suriname boas. His saddles are kind of this dark maroonish brown. You know, rather than having a bright red tail, his tail is kind of, let me show you his tail here, 
kind of this dark reddish brown yeah I don't know if you can see he's really holding on there this is a pretty good sized bull he's probably about six and a half seven feet long a strong animal as well you know uh, this is a good size you know typical size for an adult true red tail male they don't really get that much bigger than this but I, what I love about these animals is the speckling and the the dirty wild look that they have just a really cool looking boa and so this guy is proven breeder so my pair of Guianas produced litters in 2017 and 2019 uh, I actually paired them up last year and for whatever reason they didn't take so I'm going to try it again this year and hopefully we'll have uh, some more better success this year the female from this pair is probably one of my largest boas she's about eight feet long about you know a foot foot and a half longer than this guy and she's quite a handful to handle as well not my tamest boa but this male is pretty docile and you know fairly laid back although he's got the typical squeeziness for a true red tail so hopefully we'll get some of these guiana true red tails i'm probably going to pair up my true red tails the last of all my pairings it's probably going to be a few weeks more until I pair them up. Um, basically, I'm going to pair up my morph boas first, which are already paired up. Um, then my imperators, you know, my imperator localities like my Central American island boas and, you know, the other imperators. Some of those are paired up already. Then my other uh, subspecific boas, my Argentines, my uh, Langicadas, and my Sabogue. And then my true red tails, you know, will be the last. So a few more weeks to go, but stay tuned. I'll keep you posted on all my breeding plants. Let's look at another animal. New this year to my breeding lineup are a couple pairs of dwarf island boas that were holdbacks born here in 2017. And they're now five years old. This is actually a Tarahumara uh, dwarf boa. Actually not an island boa. This is a mainland Mexican form, but arguably the smallest of the uh, boa constrictor group you know with uh, adult males as small as three and a half feet this guy it was born here in 2017 from rio bravo bloodline animals and you can see the he's got some beautiful pink colors on his sides but the beautiful chocolate mocha uh, color of his back and saddles really love these animals you probably heard me go on about how great they are so i'm gonna you know spare you that today but i'll just show you this guy um I, he's probably about four feet long um, he weighs about 1.2 kilos you know definitely a small animal actually I was just looking at Vin Russo's uh, complete boa constrictor the not the new edition the old edition that I have and he he claims that uh, Gus Renfro who was you know one of the first breeders if not the first breeder to breed these in the US bred a his first female was only three and a half years old and only 38 inches long so even smaller than this guy um, you know so we'll see you know his uh, parents were not that much bigger than this when I bred them actually his dad was smaller than this guy um, so we'll see how it goes but I didn't produce any of these last year and I think these tar humor Mexican boas have really gotten popular lately which you know they've been long overdue for a rise in popularity since they're such a great locality boa so hopefully we'll have some of these on the ground you know sometime in the early summer uh, the next generation of tar humor boas from Brian Boas another dwarf boa holdback that might be paired up for the first time is this 2017 qual key dwarf boa from a small island off the coast of Belize. Correction, I think I told you guys that the Tarahumara I just showed you was five years old. He's actually four. They're gonna be five at the time when their first babies are born if the breeding is successful. But you can see this Qual Key boa is about the same size as the Tarahumara boa. Unfortunately, he's in shed right now as is typically the case whenever I try to make a video with a bunch of different boas. Um, but you can see the beautiful gray colors um, kind of busy pattern on the saddles. These Qual K boas are another great dwarf locality, perfect for someone that wants the full boa constrictor experience in a more manageable, manageable pint-sized package. And they're not really that much bigger than the Tar Himara. You know, the uh, large adults are maybe four and a half, five feet max. Um, so this guy isn't going to get that much bigger than this but a really cool animal and we'll see about hopefully getting some of these on the ground uh, sometime in the summer of 2022. 
One more island boa I hope to produce in 2022 is the hog island boa. And I've been getting a lot of uh, requests from people lately for hog island babies. Unfortunately, I didn't have any in 2021. Um, my male, I'm not just, I think my male may be getting a little old. Just wasn't interested in breeding that year. But um, I have a new male, a holdback, that I plan on pairing up with this female. And this is a, a female who bred for me um, a few years ago, back in, uh, I think, 2019. And so hopefully we'll get another litter. This is a really heavily speckled female with a lot of pink colors. You know, beautiful looking animal. Uh, pairing her up with a pure Sears bloodline holdback male uh, from 2017. So it'll be his first uh, attempt at breeding, you know, a little bit young, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, fingers crossed for some hog islands in 2022. I'm planning quite a few true red tail boa constrictor constrictor pairings for 2022. You know, one of the localities is the North Brazilian locality, which is a locality I haven't uh, bred before, but hopefully this will be a good year for me. Uh, this is my female produced by basically boas, uh, Mike, Mike Weitzman. And this female is from uh, Bassett, Evans, Dyer, and Renfro bloodlines. You know, really beautiful animal. I love the busy look of this animal, all the speckling and background markings. And then she's got this beautiful bright red tail as well. Some of the North Brazilians have kind of a shorter tail, but this female, her tail's almost as long and red as some nice Suriname. So definitely the best of both worlds. And uh, I like the also the behavior and personality of this female. You know, she's got the muscle and strength of a true rat tail, but she's also handleable. She's not, she doesn't go totally spastic or try to get away. Just a beautiful animal. And as she holds still, you can see the beautiful head markings of this animal. Um, as you can see, the North Brazilians are, they don't get real big. They're a little bit smaller than the Surinams and Peruvians. This is a 2015 female, so she's uh, about six years old. And she's maybe, I don't know, five and a half feet or so. Not a huge boa, but you know, really good size uh, for a pet. Um, you know, great boa for someone that has a Suriname or Peruvian and they're maybe looking for something a little bit different as far as the true red tail. You just can't beat these northern Brazilian true red tail boas. And I'll show you one more animal for today's video, another potential uh, true red tail breeder for 2022. This is a Peruvian true red tail male, and this guy was born here in 2015. I haven't bred him before, but you can see how gorgeous he is. Just a really clean uh, back, you know, dorsal surface, and then looking at his sides and belly, you can see all the speckling, and just really love the contrast and the speckling on these animals. And this guy, he's got this beautiful golden, you know, back with these thin saddles. But interestingly, the saddles have this slight peaking to them. You know, not a look you see real often in Peruvian true red tails. But, it, you know, as I found, you get a lot of variety in true red tails. So with every litter, sometimes you'll have a boa that just doesn't have that typical look. And there's a lot of different directions you can take these breeding projects in. But this is a really cool animal. Definitely feel the muscles on this guy. These Peruvians are among the most muscular of the boas. You can see him holding on pretty tightly there. And this guy is maybe about six feet long or so, but you can definitely feel the muscle. You know, he shows you the good shape of a true red tail in top condition. Very, very square body. You know, the sides are kind of at a right angle to the belly and to the back. Definitely not a round boa. You know, this boa is definitely not overweight, but he's also not underweight either. Just the perfect condition for breeding. So hopefully this guy will be in the mood for making some more baby Peruvian red tails this year or next year really. And so my philosophy on breeding, there's a lot of work to get ready for it. A lot of conditioning of boas, growing them up responsibly, getting them in the best shape, picking the most, uh, likely pairs of you know animals that are beautiful and they're going to enhance each other genetically in the offspring but once you put the male and the female together you have to let nature take its course you know there's not a whole lot you can do the, the breeding is up to them either they're going to breed and make babies for you or they're not 
and a lot of it at that point is outside of your control. So basically I pair up my animals, I check on them, you know, every once in a while, but I try not to disturb them too much. You know, I just want them to do their thing and let nature take its course. And, you know, sometimes you just can't make them make babies. You know, sometimes you put them together and they're instantly attracted and they start going at it. And the pairs I've put together so far, um, about half of them look like there's something going on as far as interest of the male. About half of them I haven't really seen anything yet. So we'll just have to see how it goes. And so I plan on making videos periodically updating on the 2022 breeding season. So make sure you check in and follow the channel if you're interested in following my breeding activities. I hope this video was informative and entertaining. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you may have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.